Oh god. Don't tell me it's a chopper episode. I can see why it's a forgotten android. I, I'd forget him too. God, I hate him so much. On a search for a secret base, Ezra and Kanan try to figure out why they're being chased down and how they're being chased down by the Inquisitors for everywhere they go. When they finally get to everyone else, they figure out that they're going to need answers. And the only place to get answers was, of course, speaking to Yoda. So they head down to Lothal and they see the Jedi Temple and once inside Kanan, Ezra, and Ahsoka find revelations that they didn't even expect. That's pretty much what you got from the episode of uh, Star Wars Rebels and I happen to have two of my closest friends as experts here. Chris Siegel of Star Wars Underworld. Ha ha! See, I didn't say underground, it's underworld. See, I got you that got right. I got that right. And the one and only, Ro. Now, Ro is just our residential Star Wars man for a uh, hashtag. Also, Ro ha is our countdown captain. So anytime we have a countdown, it's Ro that knows all about it. That's me. So, you guys are definitely Star Wars fans, and um, going right into it, right into the episode, I asked earlier, and I know I asked off uh, camera, but Easter eggs. Yeah. Were there any on this one compared to, like, other episodes that we've had before? Well, I don't know if it's specifically Easter eggs. You kind of have to go back and nitpick through the episodes to look for Easter eggs, but something that I found interesting right off the bat was when... Kanan grabbed the lightsaber at the end. I, are we saying spoiler alert oh, for everyone? Okay. Spoiler alert, guys. Sorry, if you haven't seen the episode, what are you doing? Yeah. Go watch the episode and then come back. Don't yeah. forget us. Just go and come back. So one, one interesting thing that I'd like to know a little bit more about was the red lightsaber. Because he definitely looked at it a couple of times. He pulled a red lightsaber, so he was fighting with a blue and a red. And before he did, he was actually looking at it before he engaged. That's one of the Easter eggs. Well... And there's a couple of other interesting things like the Grand Inquisitor and whatnot, but we'll get into that. Stuff. Well, just going into that alone, uh, the significance between the blue and red lightsaber, what is it for novice like myself? Yeah, for, to Kanan, I mean, that means that it's the dark side is involved, that ah. he might be using the dark side. Now, in canon, there's really only one instance I can think of of a Jedi using a red lightsaber, and that's Adi Gallia and the Phantom Menace. Okay, yeah. He used a red lightsaber, but pretty much everyone else, it's a clear distinction. The Jedi choose blue or green. And right. occasionally one time purple. One time Which purple. Which is actually, in some legends, I don't know if it's there's ever been a canon, uh, a canon story, purple was significant. Uh, signified a cross between mm -hmm. purple, red and blue. Like there may have been some dark force use in that user's past. It, so, it's it's well, vapad, which is a a type of using the force. It's a it's okay. a type of form for a lightsaber where right. you basically go to the brink of the dark side, but don't jump over the cliff. And well, that's that's what Mace Windu. That's the forming yeah. practice, and that's why he had a purple lightsaber. And that's but that's also yeah. later the person that he did train later becomes goes to the dark side, who is. Who was the person that makes one do trained? Uh, uh, that later became... Uh, uh, was it? Was it Sword Bulk? No, I thought it was... Uh, what's his name? Not the uh, Emperor... Now, this is great. This is great. I don't <laughs> I know the name, up, guys. <laughs> yeah, I like, we're just going to later in the name just show it up there. In fact, there goes the face. All right, yeah, that guy. So, <laughs> But later he trained someone I read, and then that's why that person became uh, later on to the dark side. Anyway, moving on. There's a on. lot of legend stories out there yeah, that I'm not see, familiar with. So. See, and then with them, I don't even know if they're still canon anymore yeah. or not. And, no, they're not. Exactly, so it's a waste of time. So, nonetheless, moving on. On to this episode, besides that, uh, let's go right into the Grand Inquisitor. Yeah. Now, that blew my mind as far as uh, finding out that the Grand Inquisitor was indeed a knight of the Jedi Temple. Right. Right. right, and then also showing that he knighted uh, Kanan there. So now Kanan is no longer a, an exile or a, a Padawan. He's right. a full Jedi right there at this moment. He was uh, always knighted. like in the as far as the the canon comics go, they dubbed him the last Padawan. Yeah, exactly. So there were no Jedi temples. There there was no training. He's always been. He's always struggled a bit with his powers. Right. Um, but uh, this signifies now he is actually a full-fledged Jedi Knight and I thought that was pretty interesting yeah well, that, that's pretty big actually yeah. it's like yeah. no now do they mention any of that in the in the comic 
concerning Kanan, or is the comic a prequel? It's before, right? I have not read all of the the Can- I've read the first three, two or three books in that the Kanan arc. Have you read? The- it, it takes place right after Revenge of the Sith, right after Order Sixty Six. Uh, he's okay, trying to okay. survive, so this is way later. Yeah, but yeah. this is significant because it's like he's coming full circle because he rejected the the yeah. Jedi way. He didn't want to be a Jedi anymore okay. after all the okay. stuff went down, mm-hmm. and now he's come full circle and is being knighted as a Jedi. So that's pretty cool. And then as far as the Inquisitor is concerned, this explains a lot about him, like it how does, he yeah. knows. You know, um, Depa Blava, who was uh, Kanan's master, right, exactly. and how he recognizes her, her form that he's using. <laughs> like, that uh, uh, you wondered when he said that, like, how did yeah, he know this? Cool. Yeah. And now, now we know it's because he was in the Jedi Temple when all that was exactly. Happening. But now, now it's like I'm curious though, he was knighted by a force ghost, technically, right? Well, it, is it is. a ghost? It's not a ghost. I think it's it's kind of the force itself, and there it's just someone that he's familiar with, a face that he would recognize, so he doesn't freak out. Exactly, that makes sense. But he's but, not a ghost. I mean, I, although that is a really cool theory because the thing is, well, when, there was definitely a physical energy. Yeah. To that because they at the end. Yeah. Said we'll we'll hold back the enemy or whatever. He said something right. like we're gonna stall him for you. Exactly. Well, well, and then when it did, it didn't choose to change the face. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a good question. Well what's interesting about the Inquisitor is that he technically sacrificed himself yes, at, at the right. end of season right. one and of course that sometimes does result in having force ghosts like with obi-wan so right. i kind of thought that at first i'm like oh maybe this really is a ghost because he sacrificed himself but that doesn't really work because you have to be trained by qui-gon to do that and there was no uh, evidence yet anything to do with qui-gon, qui-gon. so I, I don't really think that was his actual presence there i think it was just the force manifesting itself in a way that kanan would recognize hmm. do you think now that but so why did the Force choose to give us this big reveal? Anyway, why did the literal Force itself, if he's not a Force ghost and he's just a manifestation of the Force in that way, why did it still give us the reveal and let us know that he ultimately was a knight of the Well, Jedi I think temple? that there's going to be a lot of future tie-ins. I mean, I'm really fascinated by these, these temple knights. Yeah, I am. These knights of the Jedi temple. I don't, know, I don't know if it's significant, but I just get the same kind of feeling that Somehow, because he was a Sith and he came from the, this Jedi, I feel like the Knights of Ren origin story might be somehow related mm. to these Ooh. these guys. Maybe not this group specifically, but when you look at um, preview footage for like Episode Eight and and and, right. and the, those vision scenes, you see these knights, uh-huh. Knights of Ren, and it just seems very similar. The Knights of the Temple, the Knights of Ren, right. and and these betrayal, okay. you know, okay. and this, the, these betrayals that happen. So I kind of, I don't know if it's significant or not, but I just get this feeling that there's some, there might be some kind of time. Well, down the, the, road. the thing Definitely. about the, the these Jedi Temple Knights is they were originally training to be Jedi or wanted to be Jedi, and then they weren't good enough to be Jedi. And so they were inserted as just knights. They kind of had this force sensitivity, but they weren't all the way. So, so essentially, they're like how the dark side has inquisitors. They're essentially exactly. the equivalent so of you, for the light. So you'd understand why someone like that could be ambitious, would want more than that. And it would be really easy oh, to turn geez. them over and say, hey, you don't have to just guard this temple anymore. You can <laughs> you can go with me and you can be an inquisitor. You can hunt okay. down the Jedi that, that held you down. Well, now, uh, as far as Ahsoka, it, it, was it big to anyone knowing that she's actually said, well, no, I've let go of uh, a Jedi. I, I renounce it. She's no longer a Jedi. Uh, I mean, that's something I think we already knew. Yeah, that's what happened right? at the end of season five. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. already knew that. But uh, the thing about her finally getting getting the confirmation that Darth Vader was right. her master. Mm. That was really great to see as yeah. far as her and the revelation that happened right there in front of her. Mm-hmm. That made it great. Yeah. I loved every bit of And there was also the little nod of approval from Yoda at the end. Oh, because yeah. I don't know if it, in she had she never had too much contact with Yoda in Clone Wars. If, right. If maybe once or twice when she was in front of the council. I right. can't really think right. of too many, too many times. Yeah. But... When she looked back before she left, and, no- and Yoda like kind of gives that nod of approval, it's almost like, like, you don't have to explain anything. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to explain anything. You know, you are you're you're a Sokotano, and there's mutual respect, and you're so, doing what has to be but done. But with that, was it also ushering her back in to the Jedi way? I don't way? think so. Or no. approving her? No, no that's not what that was, that was about. That was that was Kanan's story. Yeah. There. Okay. I, I think okay. it might have to do with her confrontation that we know is coming. That up. we know is coming mm-hmm. because it's kind of like. 
Luke Skywalker, right? Yeah, exactly. Yoda didn't want Luke to, but you're going to, he let him know you're going to have to face Vader again. Right. It kind of felt like the same thing. Like, you're going to have to face Vader, you know? Yeah. True. Well, talking about that and the light, the dark, and everything else, they mentioned something once again about Ezra and saying that, you know, essentially your your Padawan, your trainee, is being pulled by the dark side. Mm. Now, Mm-hmm. There was a theory that you broke yeah. not that long ago that seems to be picking up a yeah. lot lately, which is that Ezra later yeah, becomes... Yeah, it's something we knew about for a little while. Uh, Joe and I came across a friend who, in the industry, told us about some sides. And for those of you that don't know, when you're auditioning a part, you're given a few pages of a script. And it's not necessarily the script that you're shooting, and the names aren't necessarily the final names in the story. It's just a scene. Right. Sometimes it is from the movie, sometimes it isn't. They're called sides. We do know that Benicio Del Toro read sides for a character named Ezra. Right. Okay. So, does that mean anything? Possibly. We do know that he's playing a dark character. Yeah. A, a conflicted dark p- character because when he was asked about it, Benicio Del Toro said, he's supposed to be a bad guy, but I don't see him that way. Mm. Right? So, it kind of sounds like it could be Ezra. The timeline kind of works right. for someone in his age, uh, age casting. Um, so I think Ezra has, it's, and it's real obvious, there's some episodes where you see real anger from this character, especially mm-hmm. when his parents were killed. Of course. Um, in that episode. You see real anger. There's so much similarity between him and and, and Anakin Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Anakin loses love, loved ones. He's way more passionate than he should be for a mm-hmm. Force user. Right. It leads to bad things. He wants to help his friends. I don't know. Yeah, well, he's here. got all these friends, and none of them have died yet. Yeah, his yeah. parents have died, but then they haven't been really a part of his life. So right. that and that affected him greatly. What happens if if Kanan ends up dying? If Ahsoka ends up dying? If Sabine ends up dying? What would happen to his psyche at that point? Well, like, that may be the breaking point. It, it exactly. might be, and it's interesting because this kind of ties into like the expanded universe in a sense because you wonder like how much of the expanded universe are they going to source from for just the ideas and you had this Jedi Asherod Het who grew up in the prequels okay, and then yes, he becomes yes. a Sith Lord exactly. in the old sequel books right exactly so we're wondering are we going to go ahead and get everything moving get the momentum towards any of this well we're looking for, or at least the change within Ezra himself yeah I mean I think it's very possible I mean we know that, that something shocking is going to happen at the end of this season Oh, yeah, and definitely. a lot of it could be a lot they're setting up this <laughs> massive confrontation between these big villains yeah. these big heroes and I, I don't know I don't think they're all going to survive this look we know oh, what's canon we know what's canon right there's just too many Jedi alive right now <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah that's right yep. that's right we're, you know, yeah. we're looking when for that moment 4 comes up there's not a whole lot of options as far as Jedi training goes <laughs> right. for Luke. Right. Okay, right. all right, all right. It's, it's too much it's too much for me right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to go ahead and continue this conversation at another date, possibly in another, another episode that's coming up. I know, I know. But if you guys want to know more, you go ahead and comment below. Uh, trust me, Chris and Ro will be able to comment, answer any of your questions. You guys have theories, throw them at us. We'll definitely be able to respond and give you guys some info. Um, I want to thank Chris and, of course, Ro. Thank you guys for coming out, talking, geeking out with me concerning Star Wars. I, I love doing it. Glad to be here. And uh, it was great to have you guys here. You guys can make sure to subscribe to this channel for more information and more discussions just like this. So check us out. And uh, you guys want to make a hashtag that see if it trends? No? Sure. You wanna, what? Hashtag Ezra Turns. Uh-huh. Hashtag Ezra Turns. Guys, go ahead and make sure that starts to circulate everywhere on uh, at least the interwebs. So <laughs> we'll be seeing you guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel, like I said before, that hashtag show for everything trending in geek pop culture. And remember, every great host has an even better sign-off. Apple to apple.